Hey guys, good to see you back. I am Kamal Vich and in this video we will discuss few topics from the 5th module of my book Let's Learn 3G in 10 days. This module is about radio resource management. The radio resource management or RRM is a collective term for a group of smart algorithms like admission control, power control, handover control, packet scheduling, overload control etc. Together they try to maximize the capacity of a cell, guarantee the planned coverage, maintain radio connections quality and also take care about the priorities among users. A well-tuned radio resource management is crucial for the optimization of any radio network. RRM in UMTS is based in RNC and it relies on four inputs which are shown in this picture. First, the measurement reports coming from node B's. Second, measurement reports from connected UEs. Third, the parameters describing the cell configuration and fourth, the internal measurements and calculations performed by RNC. In my book, these topics are explained in a little bit more details. Let us discuss some concepts about packet scheduling here. The packet scheduler of release 99 channels is located at RNC. RNC communicates with UEs with the help of one-to-one -one connection called RRC connection. When UE does not have an RRC connection established with RNC, it is said to be in RRC idle mode. And after successful RRC connection establishment, it comes to RRC connected mode. In RRC connected mode, UE can find itself in cell DCH state, cell FATCH state or cell PCH state, depending on which channels it is listening to right now. In cell DCH, UE has a code allocated to him and its bit rates can be up to 384 kilobits per second. In this state, UE's power consumption is highest. Therefore, if it becomes inactive for a few seconds, the allocated codes are taken back from UE and it is pushed into cell fetch state. In cell fetch state, UE can use RAJ and fetch common channels, but the bit rates are limited to let's say 30 kilobits per second. The power consumption in cell fetch state is less than cell DCH, but it is still very high. Therefore, if inactivity is detected in this state, UE is shifted to cell PCH state, which I call as parking lot or standby state. In cell PCH, no resources are located to UE from network side, therefore operator does not mind keeping it attached for several minutes. On UE side, the power consumption is comparable to idle mode. Therefore, UE also does not mind staying in this connected mode, power saving connected mode, even if it does not have any data to send. The feature of cell PC state also improves end user's experience. Now, after few seconds or minutes, if UE wants to send or receive data, it can again become active very quickly. In short, the transition time from cell PCH to cell DCH is much quicker than the transition time from RRC idle to cell DC transition. In order to understand this, we can think of our laptop's behavior when we don't touch it or we don't use it for a few minutes. Now, one of the key tasks of radio resource management is to keep an eye on current load. And load in CDMA is measured in terms of power. Let us discuss a cell as shown in this picture. As the number of active users in the cell increases, the received power at node B's receiver also increases. Therefore, the total received power at node B's receiver is an indicator of the current uplink load. This quantity is also known as uplink interference or received total wideband power RTWP or PRX total. These are just different names for the same thing. On downlink side, for every active user in the cell, E node B has to spend some power on downlink channels. Therefore, the total transmitted power from node B's receiver is an indicator of the current downlink load. This quantity is known by two alternative names, total carrier power, TCP, and PTX total. From the discussion we had just now about power, it is clear that UE and node B should transmit as little power as possible and as much power as required. Now, in order to achieve this optimum power level, we have a very fast power control which works both in uplink and in downlink to control the transmit power of UE and node B respectively. 
we will discuss only the uplink power control here. Okay, the operation starts as soon as DCH channel is established for UE. RNC informs node B about the desired signal to interference ratio known as SIR target. In uplink, UE keeps on sending some special bits called pilot bits which are already known to node B. Therefore, node B can measure the signal to interference ratio and compare this measured value of SIR with the target value of SIR. Based on this comparison, node B will either signal a 0 or 1 bit to UE using downlink DPCH channel. Now according to received TPC bit, UE will either increase or decrease its transmit power by a pre-negotiated step. And the next uplink transmission will always be at a modified power level. This procedure takes place exactly 1500 times in one second. And that's why the power control in UMTS is also called fast power control. There are still a lot of interesting features about RRM that I would like to discuss with you but I cannot do it in this short video clip. For those details, please download my ebook from my website wiresandwaves.net. For some more good stuff, I am waiting for you in the next video. Thanks for watching.